Hey guys, welcome back to Pristine's Reads. Um, today we are back with another book review, and we are reviewing Never Seen by Shannon Messenger, book number four in the Keeper of the Lost City series. So today I'm reviewing this with Mickey, and uh, it's just the two of us today, and yes, yeah, it's going to be the two of us. So let's get started with my summary first. So Never Seen picks up immediately where everybody's left off. Sophie, Fitz, Keith, Bianca, and Dex are going to attempt something unheard of in Elven history. They're going to run away and join an illegal organization, the one that created Sophie. Joining the Black Swan will be risky, but it's the only way Sophie and her friends can get answers. When they settle in at the Black Swan's underground treehouse hideout, aka Alouvater, Sophie meets a gnome named Kala, who's been part of Project Moonlark from the beginning. She learns that there's a deadly plague infecting the entire gnome species that started in a place called Wildwood Colony, and she determines to learn how to stop it. Meanwhile, Mr. Forkle decides that it's time for them to rescue Prentice. But how? Sophie and her friends face impossible challenges on all sides, and when an attempt to save Prentice goes terribly wrong and they have to face their consequences, Will she ever be able to find out the truth? And when Sophie is shaken by terrible betrayals, will she let the guilt break her? You will have to find out. So that's it for my summary. And now for the morals. Mickey's going to take the worldviews. Okay, so worldviews. As we've said before, in pretty much every other review, I believe, Shanna Messenger is not a Christian author, and she does hold pretty good moral standards for, you know, not being a Christian. Um, there are a few mentions of luck, and there was one part where Alden told Sophie and her friends to follow their hearts before they left to join the Black Swan. Technically, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, we just be careful with that philosophy, as the Bible says that our hearts are wicked and will lead us on the wrong paths. Again, nothing wrong with it, and we're probably just being overly paranoid again. Okay. Thank you, Mickey. So next up is going to be foul language, and I'll take that. So there weren't any bad words necessarily, but there are a few mentions of so-and-so muttered a few words they weren't supposed to say, or so-and-so swore under their breath. But then again, there aren't any specific words mentioned. Also, like, a few shut-ups and mild insults, but, yeah, that's it. So, yeah. next up is romance, and Mickey, you want to take that? Sure. Okay. Romance. Ooh, boy! <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this book is starting to ramp up a bit in terms of romance, but in case that sounds wrong, I'm just going to say that there's nothing inappropriate. It was all very clean, and what we mean is that it's pretty clear now that Sophie likes Fitz. And we all know that Dex, Keith, and probably Fitz all like Sophie. It's very complicated. Sophie, however, to quote a later character, <laughs> is rocking the adorably oblivious thing. She has no idea, but she knows Fitz knows that she's hiding something from him during their cognition. Fitz keeps trying to get Sophie to tell him her secret, which is that she likes him, but Keith always interrupts them by saying he's picking up some strange mood swings. Thank you, Keith! I mean, what? (laughs) (laughs) There are also some other things which Christine will be putting in the description. Okay. Thank you. So, next up is drugs. I'll do that in super quick. So, there were a few points when people had to take sedatives if if the situation was getting out of hand or stuff like that, but that's it. One little mention. (laughs) Okay, so that's it for morals already. So, um, I'm going to give my rating and recommended age level, and then Mickey's going to give hers. So, hey, I am rating this five stars. I feel like Never Seen is one of the more heavily plotted books with, like, tons of action and crazy good storylines with new twists and surprises. But then again, pretty much every book in this series ends on a cliffhanger. So I'm going to put a recommended age level at 11+. plus. While the content is certainly suitable for 10+, plus, so parents out there, if you have a really mature 10-year-old, then by all means, go ahead. I just feel like that the story is really complicated, so anybody younger than 10 might have a hard time following along with the story fully. But yeah, I loved, 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 loved this book. And let me just say, I was totally, hold on, actually, don't listen if you don't want any spoilers, okay? 
you can if you want, but you'll have no idea who I'm talking about, okay? So I'm just going to say <laughs> I was totally biased from the moment I met Tam and Lynn. In case you don't know, Tam is my last name. Fun trivia about me. I am not kidding. It legitimately is. And I have an aunt named Lynn, spelled the exact same way as the Lynn in the book. <laughs> and whenever Mr. Forkel calls, like, Tam, Mr. Tam, because, like, he calls everybody Mr. and Miss, whether they like it or not, um, I always think it sounds like this, somebody's talking to my dad. <laughs> and Tam and Lynn are both Asian-looking, and Messenger said they look like, and, like, she wrote in the book, uh, they, look, they look like they were K-pop idols or people straight out of a meme, but I personally think they look Chinese. Just my own personal bias. <laughs> so bottom line is, I was like through the roof happy when I met them. And I love how Messenger has like so many diverse characters in her books. So I will say I was like not happy with what Messenger had Tam do in flashback. That's like, let's be cool. But I'll save that for my flashback review. So again, needless to say, I love Tam and Lynn. So never seemed to be totally happy. And yeah, you can probably tell, but I'll wrap up my rant and let Mickey give you her review now. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to rate this a 4.9 stars. Again, I don't like to rate things a perfect five stars just because I feel like there's nothing that's technically perfect. Um, but the reason that I actually wanted to do this book with Chris is because it's my favorite one in the series, and I love this book to death. It's the one that actually, like, legitimately got me hooked. Um, before, it was just, like, a book series that I was reading in the background. And then I read Never Seen, and I was like, nope, I'm invested now. <laughs> um, um, and for the age recommendation, I'm going to say 10 plus, just because it is a very, very complex storyline. And I feel like this book is really where we get to see a lot of the complexities in this world um, in general. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna say 10 plus just because it can be a little bit difficult to follow along. And I started reading them at age 11 and I was I was perfectly fine. So um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much, Mickey, for doing this with me. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. I have links to this book on different sites in the description below. So check that out too. Also, I'm going to be putting my written review on um, my account called Goodreads, in case you don't know what that is. It's basically like an app or website for reviewing books. And I'm putting all my written reviews on that. But I'll put my link in case you don't have time to watch the entire video. Just check out the link below. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and all that jazz. And I will see you next time. Bye! Being prepared is never a bad idea, Kala told her. No matter what happens, I won't be here forever. And when I think of what I want to be remembered for, it comes down to two things. I want to be remembered for two things in life. One, my appetite. Remember Shona? She was the dog who could eat 52, live 52 dental chews in one hour. She could eat a whole bag of liver treats for dinner. She could eat anything and everything. She was known for eating pillows, much to my pristine disliking, books, carpet fluff, markers, crayons, and etc. Two, I want to be remembered for an amazing dog I was. I was so amazing, I let my owners walk me, I let them pet me, I let them groom me, I let them feed me dinner, I let them feed me lunch. No, wait. I let them feed me breakfast. I let them bathe me. Actually, no, I didn't. I didn't like bathing at all. But whatever. Pristine, wasn't I such an amazing dog? Go on, tell them. I was so amazing, right? Right? Um, actually... Uh, you can stop your sentence right there. Let's just focus on my amazingness here, yeah? You know, right? You and my star flowers do. So what better legacy could I have than to combine them? 
You're not planning on cooking me for dinner, right? Sophie asked. Oh, the injustice, the indignity, the preposterousness. You, like, I could never dream of being eaten by, like, I consider my owners family members. Like, I could never dream of being cooked or even eaten by my family members, you know? Like, the injustice. This is, like, not fair. Like, Pristine, you would never eat me, right? Like, you, you would, right? Would you? Would you? Tell us. Come on. Fess up. Would you? No, I wouldn't eat you, Shana. But you know, there are some parts of the world where people actually do eat dog meat, right? What? That is just mind-boggling! Like, why? How can people live with a clear conscience? They must be beside themselves with guilt! I am so sorry, my fellow doggies. My heart goes out to you. I am so sorry you have to go through this. I cannot imagine being eaten at all. At least I don't get eaten. But anyways, I am so, so, so sorry for you, fellow dogs. Please, may God forgive those people for those evil deeds.